could you uh, introduce yourself for us and tell us your position at Wild Dairy Arts? Yeah, well, my name is Ben Wood. I'm a Jagiri, we call it in our language. I mean, Jabaljari in the desert side. And um, Jagiri skin, that's my Aboriginal skin. My Aboriginal name is Galmir. And I'm a, a really Mirong Aboriginal person. I was bred and born on Argyle Downs, which is underwater now where the lake is. And I live in Kananara now. I lived there all my life. Then you're the. Chairperson. Yeah, I'm the chairman of Warangari Arts today at this mo at this time of the round. But um, yeah, it just got me interested back into art. I, I would like to see because we do have a lot of problem with our younger generations. And um, the thing about our arts, it's it's a thing that teach them about the traditional area where they come from. And um, these are sort of things that we do that with the kids at school when they come in. The, we teach the kids about this. Well, they they did it before I came along anyhow. And I'm only just giving them the support and a bit more different style of maybe when you start with our children. I do that, I do it regularly because I look after kids on the street sometimes and not in my community and that's what I do, teach them about our culture. They don't have the opportunity of that anymore so we've got to show them, uh, all the people's got to show them about our culture, what it means. It's not just a piece of land, that it's a piece of money. It's a piece of land in your heart that keeps you alive today. It's, it's a mother. It's our mother, this earth. That's what gives us all these rituals. You eat plenty of rich food, you're healthy. You destroy this country, then you destroy all the rich food out of it. But for our arts, in our arts area, we're teaching them what not to destroy. We need to teach them about how to survive in the world. Both worlds, you know. They got taught in the European world. They should have been taught in the Aboriginal world. In a lot of these areas that Aboriginal people are caught up with the systems a, a bit too late to, it was all European education sort of. And that's what drifted mo most of our young people away from it. But we're you know, getting back into it now. We're saying here's the most important thing. We need to teach our kids about our arts. That's our culture. There was a forum today at the art fair. The topic was uh, the future of Aboriginal art, the young ones, and, and what art means to them. Will, will the next generation carry that the way that your generation is? Well, that's the thing that we're trying to teach them because. Um, because if, if, when we're going to go back and start teaching our kids in, in class and in school, because I have an invitation to go to the school now, back teaching our kids in the classroom. And you know, my intention is to go show them, ask the kid where your country is, draw it, and say, all right, you paint it for me, see what you, how do you see your country in? That gives them a self mind on what are their thoughts about it. And it tells you whether if the kids know much about the country or not. Traveling to country. Yes, we're back to we're going back to country every once a fortnight or once a week. Take our young boys, men. Well, I do the men's group in here because um, we we into the, the health, mental health, and all that. So we do the men's group. We take the men's out bush, get them back into a family tie reunion with our fam with their families. You know, the alcohol and that just drifted all our people apart, and the, and and the system is made a lot of our young people go in a different direction. We're trying to get them focused back into that now. Traditionally, I mean. How important is the art centre in your community? The art centre, it's a, it's a bearing, uh, what do you call it? It's like a massage. You go into a massage parlour and have a massage. That's how it is in your mind. You go into an art gallery, you sit there, you definitely think, if you know the country, then you are an artist. If you don't know the country, you just draw on anything anyway, it doesn't come out with the feeling that you have to show a good art, you know? And that's the thing that we're trying to teach our kids now. What, what is this, this country to them? We've got the educational world, so everybody does that, and you know, get involved in the, the European system in the class and all that. But we've got a, our own ways of teaching our own kids in a, a manner that 
being given to us from generation to generation. It hasn't changed. come to uh, an event like this, the art fair, and see all of this ra wide range of art, what, what do you think about you know, coming to this place? To me, I see this, oh, it's not only us that are struggling out here to put our arts out, it's everywhere else in Australia that is struggling to put the arts out to make our younger kids understand better about it, especially the Aboriginal kids, all, all race of people, really. You know, because the European don't know much about our arts, don't know how do we do it, why do we do it, you know. People do it for a certain reason, we don't just do it just for the fun. Sometimes we need, if we need to get our message out on this part of the country there, we need to do our art. Because a lot of people take attention to the art. The European world, you know, the outside world really takes attention to it. Yeah. How would you describe the work that comes from Warangari Arts? We do that with, well, I, I, I sit there with my, my old, all my old mob. We all sit there and paint. When we sit there, we all talk about areas. I'm painting this country here. Yeah, all right, been approved, you know, by all the other groups. And we all share that. It's, it's a group. It's a group thing we share together which teaches every other people about other parts of the area too. And not only us, but the kids what come from school, we teach them the same. So everybody gets, it's a school. It's our school, you know. We've got a European school where we go, a government school and all that. Well, that's, that's our school, the Aboriginal Arts. <laughs> and uh, when Warren Gary comes to Darwin for the art fair, is, that, is this a, a good um, event for Warangari itself to be involved in, have this uh, opportunity here in Darwin? Look, all around Australia, all of us blackfellas are tied to each other in some ways. And the only way we are tied together is by our traditional knowledge for country. All around Australia, every one of these people, no matter they come from other parts of the part of Australia, they're still part of us, you know, Aboriginal person. Just that they grew up and learned somewhere else. Like, you know, like you got, you got white people, like you come from England or somewhere, and you got Japanese come from other parts of the country, you know, like that. But we all come from one Australia. That's how we share our knowledge and understanding. Beautiful. What is the art of the East Kimberley about? What is, what is the, what well, message is coming out of that art? Well, in the past, Aboriginal arts used to be just painted in caves and everything else like that, not out in the public. That way, that's, that was our, in our area, we'd wanted, if you wanted to teach our young boys, we'd take them away to certain areas and teach them and show them what this means. You know, some areas that they draw, they don't draw, which you, and people don't know about, only us, we know about it. You know, like, well, our, our, our culture law, been handed down from a long time before we come along. It doesn't give us the right to change it today. You know, we, we don't have the, the rights to do that. It's all in black folly in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, we've got some artists from Kananara doing boab carving yes. workshops. What can you tell us about that? Well, boab carving is it, it's a little thing. The, produce uh, what sort of drawing and that and animals and that what we live out in this in the in the area around Kananara. Anyway, you know, really big mobile kangaroos everywhere. But the way you draw it and, and the understanding of it, and they got all different names. You know? And um, the carving that they do out there is it makes them relax and shows people these are the, the animals that we got in this part of the country. Like I come here and I to look at men and great and that they got a different sort of animals, you know? I come and look in the Northern Territory side, they got a different sort. And in the desert, they got a different sort of painting again because most of the things that we got over this side is, isn't in the desert. That's why it's really good for Warangari Arts to be here because we look at it as a, as a whole. You, you, well, me being the chairman of the board, I, I look at it as, as a whole in different areas, different arts, gives you an idea 
on how them people survive in that country. And uh, with the, the Boab carving, is that uh, the carving on the nut or on just Boab wood? Or? Just the Boab nut. Boab nut. Yeah. Okay. It's good. If, if you drop it and it falls, you're going to eat it. <laughs> you know? You eat, you eat the, the powder on it and then you clean the seed up and you cook it and you roast it like peanut. You break the shells off it and it tastes lovely, like peanut. And we call it gudawan. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks very much for that, Chris. No worries. Pleasure to speak to you. <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll just get you to sign a poem here. Yeah, no worries.